say the game is getting old. Monday morning and your coffee's cold. Life is not what you want it to be. You need another. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new direction. My name is Jay Izzo, and oh God, when you have one of these great, amazing, practical, life-changing, unbelievable, you can't. You can't even satiate yourself because it's just so much and you just want more, right? That's today's show. Yeah, see, see, here's the deal. So today, I have my really good friend, Ralph Peterson, on the show today. And he's done a couple books with us. And they've been outstanding. Listen, they the books have been outstanding. You know what he's going to do today? He's going to talk about his best-selling book that he wrote called Adventures in Diet Land. <laughs> fitting? Yeah, that's what I said too. What, how, you know what? The holiday season. Of course it's fitting. How to win at the game of dieting from a former fat guy. I am reading the cover of the book, folks. That is the cover of the book. Don't blame me. That's just the truth. This is an outstanding read, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to tell you, I uh, picked this book up. I couldn't put it down. Uh, Ralph sent it to me months ago, and I was trying to figure out when am I going to fit this book called Adventures in Diet Land. And someone, I myself have been someone who has lost uh, a bunch of weight and and everything. But this book is outstanding. You're going to love listening to him. First of all, I call him edutaining because he's educational and entertaining. And I'm not sure if I can do it because I want to do ed, I want to do entertaining. Chational, but it didn't work. So, but anyway, this book is gonna be great. We're gonna be talking to him because it's it's just outstanding. He's so much fun. Hey, but let's do what we do every week, right? The thing that I do every week is I said, you know what? We're four part people, right? We're physical people, we're mental people, we're emotional people, and we're spiritual people. And so, let's check in with where you're at this week in all four areas of your life, right? So, physically, on a scale of one to ten, one being miserable, ten being outstanding. Everybody out there who's tuning in, by the way, on Castbox FM Live, Facebook Live, uh, those folks who are listening listening via podcast at some point on uh, folks at iHeartRadio, Spotify, and of course, our great friends at The Oak 93.5. Oh, let me say that right. The Oak 93.5. Yeah, FM, they play the shows on Thursday and Friday. So physically, scale of one to 10, one being miserable, 10 outstanding. Where are you all at today, physically, right? I mean, five's average, right? So where are you at, everything, right? I mean, you physically doing okay? Are you, are you, are you, you know, are you doing the things that you need to do, right? I mean, we, you know, we're in that holiday season, you know, how, how you, how's your eating habits going? I mean, we're going to talk about that, right? So I might as well bring it up. So how's that going for you, right? If you, are you doing it, you, you know, are you staying with it, you know, and, and you know what we're going to learn is, right? And I've said this before, by the way, you know, dieting is really not something you should do because, you know, I, I say it all the time, right? Because if you're going to go on a diet, do you know what that implies? You're eventually going to come off it. <laughs> this is just the fact. If it if it's not, and what Ralph's going to talk to you about, it's got to be a lifestyle. If you aren't willing to make lifestyle changes, this is never going to work. And so he's going to talk about that. So how you doing with that? How you, are you getting some exercise? Are you doing the things that you need to do uh, to make yourself better? And you know, it's two questions every time I ask you whatever area it is in your life. You know, first of all, is why are you that number? You know, whatever that number is. And then the second is, you know, what can you do about that number right now to make it a little bit higher? Right. And and if your number, let's say, is a four, I, I don't expect you to get to a 10. But can you get to a five? Right. Is there something that you can change right now to get to a five? Right. Because that's really what I'm looking for. So what do you got to do physically to make that change? All right. So let's look at the second area of your life mentally. Right. And what I mean by that is what are you consuming? What do you what do you what are you doing to enhance your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding of the things around you? Right. And I'm not talking about politics here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about really doing things for yourself. That's expanding your brain, truly expanding your brain on both the right side, the creative side and the left side, the logical side. Okay, because if you're just watching news and you think that that's helping you, I'm just telling you right now it's not. Okay, the news is not helping you, right? That's that's people talking at you. That's not you really consuming anything. It's not you actively participating in the learning process. It's not you act, you know, really going through and becoming really expanding your knowledge on some level. And that's what we're talking about here. So what can you do, right? Same scale, one's miserable, ten's outstanding. What are you doing to expand your knowledge in the creative side and the logical side of your brain? Right. And then same two questions, you know, why are you that way? And then what can you change right now to make a difference right into the next number? All right. So you have two numbers. You have a physical number, a mental number. What about the emotional number? Right. And emotionally, what am I saying emotionally? Right. Well, I, I what I'm saying here emotionally is, you know, we have we talk in psychology, emotional quotient, emotional intelligence. Right. I'm going to make it really simple for you. 
it's it's really when we talk about that it's two things it's one is how well are you able to control your emotions right which is intention and then the second piece is how well are you able to tune into the emotions of others right because you know this world we get pretty selfish in this world especially you know in a time of year when we're supposed to be very giving and very open with everybody you know what happens when we get into these holiday seasons many times we get so selfish in it and because we want what we want and we want it now which means that what we do is we're really no longer being intentional about how we're controlling our emotions because we get frustrated because we're in long lines or we're not getting what we want or it's slow or whatever the case. And so all of a sudden our emotions are out of whack. And then you know what the other thing that happens during this time of year really frequently, which is sad, is we don't think about the other person and we don't tune into their emotions, what they're going through, what they're thinking, what they're feeling. And I'm not talking about sympathy here. I'm talking about empathy, walking in another person's shoes. And that's what we talk about when we're talking about emotional quotients or emotional intelligence is those two areas. So how are you doing in those two areas, right? How are you doing emotionally, right? Same scale. One's miserable, 10's outstanding. And then the same two questions. Why are you that way? And then what can you do to change it, right? Because you can, right? You're capable of change, right? Because you can control your emotions if you want to. All right, so you have three numbers. Now let's look at the fourth, the spiritual area. And a lot of people go, I don't know, Jay. I, I'm not a spiritual person. Well, you are. We all are, uh, believe it or not. Because if we were to remove the physical, the mental, and the emotional, everything that's left is really spiritual. Because the truth of the matter is there's certain things we just can't explain. And there's certain things that, that, we, that we have inside of us that touch what we call our soul. Sometimes we listen to music and it does something to us that we can't explain or we hear a lyric or maybe there is a quote or, you know, there is something inside of us that we just have no explanation for and that science will never explain, but that touches us in such a way that it brings us a sense of joy, not happiness. Okay. Happiness is a result of something, right? You get happy because something happened. I'm talking about joy. That's something that you have inside of you, right? At different levels. Right. And so for some people, that's God. For some people, it's nature. For some people, it's meditation. For some people, it's a variety of things. But it's something that you get into contact with that brings you to a sense of peace, that brings you to a sense of joy. And so I want to ask you on a scale of one to ten, one being miserable, ten being outstanding. How's the spiritual area working for you? And if it is God, I, I just ask you this question. How's that relationship working out for you? Right. If it's nature, how's that going for you? If it's karma, you know, how's that working for you? Whatever it may be. So you have four numbers, right? The physical, the mental, the emotional, and spiritual. You have to think of those as kind of being the four legs of a chair, right? If they're uneven, it certainly messes with our posture and the chair is not very comfortable. And at the same time, if the chair is too low, because all those areas are too low, it's also very uncomfortable. And it's not going to be where we need to be in terms of our life. And so I want you to get to all, all four of your areas up at the same level, but I want you to get them as high as you can because that's where you're going to be the most comfortable in your life and that's where you're going to be the most effective, certainly for sure. And you know, you want to talk about somebody who is really, really effective? I want to talk about my guest because my next guest is absolutely unbelievable and outstanding. His name is uh, Ralph Peterson and he is fantastic. He's the owner and operator of Ralph Peterson, LLC, a management and development company that specializes in helping mission-driven organizations build five-star management teams within the long, long-term long industry. In addition, Ralph uh, Peterson is a number one best-selling author. This book, matter of fact, uh, is one of them, Dietland. And he's an internationally syndicated columnist, highly sought after management development coach and public speaker. We're both members of the National Speakers Association. So you know how I feel about my NSA brothers and sisters. You know what, folks? If you need him, hire him. It's really not that hard. Just go to ralphpeterson.com. Uh, and also, I'll have his links on the, the write-up, blog post write-up. Ralph is a board member of the National Speakers Association and is an active spokesman for adult basic educational programs. He's, uh, his management career, uh, hiring, promoting, training managers is one of the toughest fields there is, and it's because he's in the field of housekeeping. <laughs> That's really tough. Uh, as he says, to start with, no one wants to be a housekeeper. He says, out of all the housekeepers I've ever worked with, maybe 10% of them see housekeeping as their career. <laughs> yeah, well, and he's, yet he's really successful at it. He brings more than 20 years of experience into senior management and organizational development and human resources. He's an all-in-one package, folks. Uh, he's consulted to a wide variety of industries, large and small, always brings to the table a practical approach, sound advice, and the best thing I love about him all is he has an unbelievable sense of humor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show my friend, and please welcome Ralph Peterson. Welcome to A New Direction. Or welcome back. Wow. 
Thank you, sir. I'm very happy to be back. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Thank you for doing that. I, you know, I, I neglected to do that. <laughs> so uh, this book, Diet Land, which you wrote and I fell in love with, uh, I, I want to do this for you, okay? Because if you don't mind, I'm going to do this for you right out of the back and you, because you do this in the very first of the book. And let's do a legal disclaimer here. Okay, so first of all, Ralph is not a doctor, okay? All right, that's so... Right. Let's let's just make sure that you all understand. Ralph is not a doctor. I'm not a doctor of a physical doctor, and so we are not we are not telling you this is how. Okay, uh, what Ralph is telling you is that he lost 150 pounds, and he had learned a lot of things mentally and emotionally, and certainly physically and even spiritually, about how that worked. And so we want to get that out of the way. Um, to do that and he's very open that when he talks about how to use this book and I'm just speaking for Ralph here he he is a sugar addict he's a self-admitted sugar addict it's on page 21 of the preface of the book right so he, he <laughs> and I'm going to paraphrase this for him you have to come to grips that you put yourself where you're at and that you are the only one that can get out of it but it has to be a different you and let's start right there because that's what you you I basically paraphrase paraphrase you you have to come to grips that you put yourself in this situation. So uh, you're the only one who can get you out, but you have to be a different you. Talk about that and what you mean by that. Well, the same person that got you to be overweight is not going to be the same person who's going to get you to be back and healthy. You got to change your, your approach. And really it's just about approach. It's not like everyone's like, you got to change your mindset. Well, that sounds like an awful lot of work. You know what I can do is there was a, there was a there was an exit that it was exit eight on this interstate that had this gas station and I know this is going to sound stupid but you know just like the best gas station pizza if there is such a thing was that exit eight and there was only one thing that I could well two things I could do when passing exit eight I could stop and have pizza which is what I always did or I would try to distract myself and force myself to drive by exit eight. You know what I mean? Like, right, it's right, not right. like you have to change your entire mindset. I just need to get past exit eight. <laughs> if I could just get past exit eight, I'm winning. You know, I'm on an interstate. I can't turn around. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yeah, it, you know. One, well, hold on. One, wait, one small little thing I just want to put up on the front here is because it's the number one question that I get when somebody hears I lost so much weight. They want to know, if I had surgery. And I think mm. that's an important question yep. because the answer is no. I lost 150 pounds without surgery, not because I, I didn't want it. I did want surgery. I did want to take mm. the easy road. I did want to go to the doctor and say, you know, there's nothing I can do. I mean, maybe mm. your knives will work, but the doctor wouldn't give me surgery. They're like, uh, you have no history of weight loss, which apparently is something you need. You need to be able to show you can lose weight. I had only learned, I'd only been able to show that I get really good at gaining weight. And so, <laughs> although I would have loved to embrace uh, surgery, I did not get surgery. And so this, everything we're going to talk about right. is about losing weight without surgery, just from the top. Yeah. Go and, ahead. I apologize. No, 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 no. I'm glad you did because I, that is really important because you're very proud of that fact too. And in the book, you make a very clear statement in the book saying, you know, look, I, I, th these aren't, this isn't about getting staples. This isn't about, you know, doing gastro bypass. I, I, I had to do this, right? I mean, I had to lose every pound I had to do, I had to work for on my own. And yeah, but I, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not flippant at all. No, I no, no, no. people who uh, going under and, and having a bypass or whatever, it's still a lot of work. It's yeah. still impressive. Sure if you're able to lose the weight, maintain it, I mean, it's still impressive. I'm not, I'm not downplaying anybody right. who went that route. I'm, I'm simply saying that it's always the question that's asked immediately of me. And I want to be clear, did not do it basically because my doctor wouldn't do it for me. So they're like, get out there and just do it yourself. I'm like, I don't think I can. So I like, <laughs> well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's just go to April 24th, 2013 breezes resort, Nassau, Bahamas. You wake up at 350 pounds on the side of a toilet. Uh, okay, folks, if you, if that doesn't get your attention right there, then you, then I would suggest <laughs> something else because <laughs> literally the story is about this is where the story takes place is right here. So go ahead. Yeah, and you're kind of you a little bit of a missing. I didn't wake up beside the toilet. I woke up stuck 
with my head stuck between the toilet and the tub. I had somehow had wedged head? myself in there because I had I had drank too much the day before and was the you know, the last thing I remember was running to the bathroom to throw up in the toilet and then I woke up in a very precarious and painful position. Uh, I think my mouth was open too, which makes it even worse since I was facing the toilet. So that's, that's helpful if that doesn't help you at all. Mm. <laughs> mm. So t- talk, talk to us how this, how the, how we got there. Yeah. So I, um, well, how I got there, how I got overweight and, and how I ended up in the Bahamas on, on that day was, I was I was working as a as a salesperson and so it was sales it was traveling sales and so I traveled a lot and when I first started it was pretty common to take clients out or potential clients out to dinner and of course it would be their only night out like nobody ever is whining and dining mm. the you know these clients and so it'd be a, a special treat for them and so of course they would want to have a a, a drink or a one or two and then. What happened was I was I started to entertain every night. And so even though it was my clients only night out in months, it turned out to be my every night. And so every night I was entertaining, every night I was drinking until you get to that point where I couldn't stop drinking. And so even when I wasn't entertaining, even when I wasn't with anybody, I would continue to drink and it snowballed pretty terribly from there. And I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit. I kept you know, it, and, and a lot of times, a lot of people say, you know, oh, you quit drinking. That's how you lose weight, as if there's a lot of a million calories in Jack Daniels. The truth <laughs> is, that's not it. it the, the calories from drinking was I used food to try to sober up. So I right. drink until 11, 12 o'clock at night and then order Chinese food because I, you know, I drank too much. And right. you know, what do you need? You need something bready, right? Like a <laughs> pizza. You need burgers or rice, you know, Chinese rice, even though it's, you know, comes with the general Chinese chicken, that rice should soak up some of the alcohol. That was my, my thinking. And so that's, I would overeat at the end of the night because I was trying to sober up with, I was trying to use food to sober up. And so it's not the calories of alcohol. It was the calories trying to, you know, trying to sober up from the alcohol. And so I tried to quit a bunch of times, and then I, I decided about a month before I went to the Bahamas, all-inclusive, which I don't recommend, right? Like, all-inclusive, drink as much as you want, honey, you know, that kind of <laughs> – and I went down and, and, sure enough, drank more than I should have. And I had one of those moments, and it wasn't the first time, but it was it was the last time where – you know, everybody's talking about hitting rock bottom. And you know what's funny? When you think about hitting rock bottom, I, I almost for months, maybe even years when, it, when, I was, when I was heavy for a long time. And, you know, when you talk about 350 pounds, to put it into perspective, I had a 48-inch waist, right? Like I had, my, my waist was four feet around. I could put the seat, my car seat, all the way back and my stomach still touched the steering wheel, right? Like mm. I needed a seatbelt extender in, a, in, a, in an airport, in an airplane. I... I broke an office chair. I sat in an office chair in a meeting and I leaned back and the chair broke underneath me. Like I was heavy, right? Like if you don't understand how, how heavy 350 pounds is, it's, it's really heavy. And, uh, so I had been, I had been struggling with weight and I'm struggling with alcoholism. And I saw, you know, I saw, you know, it's this weird thing when you're really heavy, it's, you never see yourself the way other people see you. Mm. You, you know, there's always some little bit of sense of denial mm. and you're never give, quite given up on yourself either, right? Like you're always trying to be like, no, I'm going to get it. No, all right, this meal is blown, um, but I'm going to get the next meal, you know, or this day, you know. Right. Yeah, all right, so I had a bad breakfast. Well, I'll start again tomorrow and then I would eat like an idiot for the rest of the day, right? So, right, right. <laughs> right. It's what we do. Well, it's what we do, right? I mean, we, we kind of like, okay, I'm going to start tomorrow. So today, you know what? It doesn't matter. So I'm going to eat whatever I want. And Yeah, that's right. That's right. As a matter of fact, one of my rules of dieting is to start on a Friday. And the reason is because every time I said I'm going to start dieting on Monday, I ate terribly, like more than I would ever normally eat on Saturday and Sunday because in my mind, I'm like, you know, come Monday, I'm never going to go to Burger King again, you know. And so I would literally just overeat. It would, 
telling yourself you're going to diet on Monday, you're literally giving yourself an excuse to not hold back until then. That's and so well, you know today's Wednesday. Start your diet on Friday. This Friday coming up, that's the day. Don't give yourself any time to. So his, go crazy. Yeah, his name is Ralph Peterson. His book is Adventures in Diet Land, How to Win the Game of Dieting from a Former Fat Guy. Uh, best-selling book, Amazon bestseller, by the way. It's an outstanding read. And he's here with us on A New Direction. Hey, everybody, did you know that A New Direction has a new sponsor? Yeah, it's Epic Physical Therapy. Whether you're recovering from an injury or surgery or suffering everyday aches and pains, or maybe you're just having difficulty performing activities of daily living, or maybe you are a little overweight and you want some help there too. Maybe you just can't perform the athletic activities that you do at a high level, right? Or maybe you just want to improve how you feel and move, right? Guess what? Epic Physical Therapy will provide you with a customized treatment plan tailored to your individual needs. With their experience in rehabbing athletes to uh, professional athletes to, you know what, just everyday, everyday people, they understand what it takes to treat the entire body as a functional whole, not just your symptoms or your injury. Epic relief, epic recovery, epic results. You can learn more by going to epicpt.com. That's E-P-I-C-P-T. Dot com And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, no matter where you're at in the world, they can help you find the right real estate professional to help you sell your home or buy your next home or buy your first home. And you know what? They do that. And the reason why is they've been in the business for 35 years. And you know what they're known as? They're known as the legends of customer service. So if you want to be with a legend of customer service, because it's not just something they say, it's part of their culture. That's why they've been around for 35 years. So find out more. If you if you need to help buy, sell home, and, and matter of fact, if you live in the Research Triangle Park area, in, in the greater Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area. You could stop in and see them locally. You can just go to lindacraft.com. It's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T.com. And I need to give a t-shirt shout out this week. I'm wearing a brand new t-shirt. I want to thank the Mollies who own the brand new Branding Iron Cafe at 636 East Linden Street in Wahoo, Nebraska, where I went to high school, who just won their first uh, state championship. Congratulations, Warriors. I'm really proud of you. And as a former Warrior football player, man, you just made us really proud, and I can't be greater. But check out the Branding Iron Cafe. It's right there by the stockyards. It's awesome. Their food is great. The mollies are great. You're going to love them. Check them out. It's the Branding Iron Cafe, and they bring you a new direction and Ralph Peterson. And... We are back with Ralph Peterson and I'm here on a new direction and adventures in diet land. So Ralph, let's talk, let's, let's talk because you kind of jumped right through chapter one, uh, pretty easily because I was like, well, I was going to ask you about this. I was going to ask you about the seatbelt extender on the plane. And, uh, I was going to ask you about the joke, broken chair incident. And I was going to, I was going to ask about the car accident and I was going to ask about eating for six and uh, I glossed over it. I glossed now over you, it. It's fine. I'm trying to say that I, I've, I have all the battle wounds of of uh, being heavy, and what I I apologize because let me let me just make the point I was trying to make, and that is heavy. I dreamed of the day I would hit rock bottom. Mm. I really wanted to hit rock bottom. I wanted and, and understanding what that means in retrospect, I think is really helpful to people who are struggling with it now because. If you're out there and you're like, I, I want to hit rock bottom. I, I wish there was a place where I, you know, like that would be the most devastating thing ever. And you have to come back from that. Right. For me, like it, my, my rock bottom, I, I say in the book, I have a cute little thing. I, I hit rock bottom and then I fell down the stairs, <laughs> which is true, into a pool and had to be rescued by a security guard. It was most embarrassing, terrible event, painful. But I don't mean it to laugh. I don't mine. mean to, I don't mean to laugh at that, but I mean, it's, I, I, I it's I'm I'm sorry. I I really don't. But the fact of the matter is that you. I mean, this really happened, and you're 350 pounds. It did, of course. <laughs> I mean, it really did happen. It's it's sad, but at the same time, it's like it's it's kind of funny because it's the only way sometimes we can get get our get get our attention, right? It has yeah. to be something yeah, that disastrous. It, no, it's true. And, and the, the biggest thing with me in retrospect, again, about what it means to hit rock bottom. And so what it means to hit rock bottom for me was about permission. Mm. I needed to give myself permission to stop drinking and start putting myself and start dieting and start saying, you know, no to things. I, I was literally looking for enough street cred to get credibility with my partner, with my wife at the time, with my friends. I needed, because otherwise, 
if you're like, you know what, I'm not feeling very well. I don't think I'm going to drink. All of my friends would be like, don't be a wussy. Just have, you can have one beer. Yeah. But if I said, hey, listen, I almost died yesterday. My friends are like, oh my God, you really shouldn't. I mean, they pumped your stomach out and everything. It's, it's, it was way more mm. hitting rock bottom for me was way more about having something that I could, some event that I could show my friends to go see this. This is why I can't do that anymore. This is why I can't hang out with you anymore. This is why I can't eat at buffets anymore. This is why I can't, you know, and so that, that was, that's a huge eye opener to me in retrospect that it was never truly about me hitting rock bottom. I wanted to be able to show everybody else that I'd hit rock bottom in such a convincing way that they would stop going, you're fine. Just have another beer because Mm. every one of my friends to this day just want me to have a beer. One beer is not going to kill you. Right. It's not going to hurt you. Right. Well, you can't, you don't have one drink, not a sip. I mean, right. you can't even have a sip, you know? Right. right. Time to t- <laughs> yeah. And they're not being malice. Right. You know, I mean, nobody wants to drink alone, right? It's yeah. So yeah. it's important to understand what hitting rock bottom meant for me. So I was super happy that I finally had this event where I hit rock bottom, fell down the stairs, you know, I, I woke up my head stuck between a toilet and a tub I, I sued, suicidal doesn't even begin to explain the, the level of despair I felt. But the good news is, Jay, that I left the Bahamas mad. I mean, steaming mad. And I was mad at the right person for the, for the first time in my whole life. I was mad at me. Hmm. And I knew that I could, I had to change it. I either had to jump off the balcony or just change it. Like, and for a long time, dieting and, and living healthy and having six pack out, it seems so foreign. It seems so difficult. Like how do people do that? I remember right. one of these, one of these infomercials I was watching, I'm laying in the Bahamas. I'm in bed. I'm bloody from head to toe. I mean, cause when you fall down a concrete steps into a pool, they're very unforgiving when you weigh <laughs> 350 pounds and you're drunk. So I was scraped from head to toe and so I'm laying in bed and I'm mortified because, you know, we had just started the vacation and so did everybody else. So it's like this, this all inclusive resort where everybody goes for the week and it's like Tuesday, you know what I mean? Like and right. everybody's still there until Saturday and so are you and you don't want to make eye contact. So I'm like, I'm just going to stay in my room and just watch, you know, crazy TV. And there's a commercial, an infomercial. This is at the time when one of those extreme workouts uh, was going on. Everybody was in like the the 30 minute or six minute abs and all right, that stuff. Right, so it was right. extreme. And there was this guy and this girl and they were just ripped. They were goddesses. They were, you know, perfect bodies. And I just remember sitting there and thinking, that's their job. Right. Their whole job. Imagine having the job where somebody goes, Hey, do you want to go grab a piece of pizza? And you have to go, no, I can't because I'm working because right. it's my job to look like this. And if right. I have pizza, I won't look like this anymore. So I, I got to keep this tight so I can keep working to pay the bills. Like, what if I treated my, what if I treated my life and being healthy, like it was my job. Mm. And that's how I started. Mm. So I went home both mad as heck and armed with this idea that if I just treat it like a job routine, like you're going to wake up in the morning, what are you going to do? And mm. then what are you going to do? And then what are you going to do? What are you going to eat? Well, like plan it today. Don't wait till tomorrow. If I wait till tomorrow, I'm screwed. I'm right. Screwed. Right. Right. His name's Ralph Peterson. Uh, it books the title Adventures in Diet Lands. Fabulous book, by the way, available on Amazon. Uh, bookstores. It's also available audio if you want to. Um, did you read? Did you read for your book? By the way, I did. Yeah, I did. I love that. Yeah. I do the same thing. I, the audio book. Yeah, because it's available in audio, Kindle, um, paperback. I'm I'm holding up for those who were with us on Facebook Live, and uh, for those who are at Castbox FM, and of course you you folks listening on iHeartRadio and other podcasts and and um, the Oak FM. Uh, it's a great book. It's called Diet, The Adventures in Diet Land, uh, How to Win at the Game of Dieting from a Former Fat Guy. You should really pick it up. Uh, it's it's just a great read. It's real. It's honest. And um, it's it's fantastic. I, I want to address something that you talked about in Chapter 2 because, which by the way, it's called, the chapter, which I think is a great title. It's called Timing is Everything. Uh, we have all done this at some point in my life because I, I remember doing this. Uh, you, you talk about it, it was June seventeenth, two thousand seven. It's one thousand three hundred and ninety four days until you turn forty. And uh, and I, matter of fact, I did this by the way. I was over three hundred pounds, and I mean, I checked myself into a weight loss accountability clinic, dropped a ton of weight, and and with with you know managed to with some help to get it 
but um, what ha- but what you then put it back on and then had to take it back off again. Uh, but then, but we, uh, which by the way, everybody does, right. But, but here was the thing is that this was 2007. It's now 2013. And here's what you say. I'm further away from the goals that I had. And this is when I wanted to commit suicide. This happens to all of us, doesn't it? I mean, doesn't this happen to people who are just like going, I, I can't stand this anymore. And we go, I want to do it by my 40th birthday, or we'll say our 50th birthday, or our 45th birthday. We, we have some marker, right? And then we don't do it. What was your experience of why we don't, why you didn't do it? Well, I mean, because you clearly had laid it out. I mean, you clearly had said, okay, it's 1,394 days until I'm going to turn 40. And then here you go, and you're now further away. Why? You know, uh, two things. One... I put a lot, and you know what, now that I'm even thinking about it, I I feel like I still do the same thing. And that is, I put a lot of effort into something and then try to sell it to somebody else. Like, isn't this a good, this is a good idea, right? Like if I do this, and then if somebody poo-poos it, it kind of loses, it it like loses its, uh, uh, I lose my ability to follow through with it. And so I remember like I, I was devastated to find out I had so little time between where I was and my 40th birthday. And I felt like such a loser. Like I, I, I was like, Oh my gosh, like I've done nothing with my life and the simple basic, I can't even take care of myself. I mean, you're in your late thirties and you can't even take care of yourself. Like it was, it was really, really eye opening. And then what nobody tells you, cause everybody, like if you listen to, if you listen to motivational speakers and people who are in business books and, you know, which is exactly what I'm into. And they, they tell you something that's really great. And that is you should make lists. You should, a goal is, is just a dream unless you have it written down, right? Like put it on the paper, write it all down. What they don't tell you is if you do the work and write it down, but then still don't do anything with it. And you find that same list years later, mm-hmm. it stings like somebody's ripping off duct tape. Like, it's like, a, it's like, oh my God, like, look at what I was, I said, I was going to, I can't believe I didn't do any of that. And it's simply because once I wrote it down, instead of being solid, like, Hey, now that I wrote it down, I'm going to go achieve my goals. No, writing it down was enough for me. Apparently mm. I wrote it down and stuck it in a drawer. I couldn't get, and that's why now I don't write down lofty goals. I write down schedules, which is way different because now I'm committed with a time frame, and you know, and, and I, I know better than to take. You know, I want to, uh, I want to lose 150 pounds. That's what I want to do. No, that's not what I want to do. You know what I want to do? I want to make healthy choices. I want to be the type of person who doesn't eat donuts for breakfast. I want to be the type of person that goes for a walk every day. That's it. I just want to be that type of person. I want my friends to go, oh, no, I knew you were going to be on your walk right now. That's why I called. <laughs> I want to be that person. Right. You know, right. seriously. Right. Let, let's just keep, let's be, let's keep it serious. I, I want to be the type of person who earns a million dollars. You know what? That's, that's tough. What if I just start with having a bank account? Like, I just want to have a savings account, and I want to be committed to adding $10 to my savings account a week. That's it. Let, let me just do that. Mm. If I do that, I'm on the right path. Right. Saving money, and I'm going for a walk every day. Isn't that nice to be that kind of a person? The type of person who goes for a walk every day, and the type of person who saves a little bit of money. That's nice. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. That's it, what I wanted to be. The, so get rid of these big lofty goals. Of course, I want to lose 150 pounds. Of course, I want to run a marathon. Of course, I want to be a millionaire. Oh, sure. But right now, I'm totally satisfied with lacing up my sneakers, going for a walk. I'm totally satisfied if I'm able to speed a little bit faster than I should be just to get by exit eight. Right. I got to get by that exit. Right. Get by that exit. Be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, listen, listen, I, I agree with you because I think sometimes what happens is people, people have this big lofty goal, but they don't, they don't outline the steps to get there. And then what happens is because we don't get to that big lofty goal fast enough, what happens is we're not satisfied with the current step we're in. So what happens along the way is I keep telling people, because, you know, there's a big popular word out there now called momentum, right? Get into momentum, get into momentum, right? But the fact of the matter is there's so many people out there who are just stuck. 
And if they can just be satisfied with one simple step in the right direction, then what happens is they can take the next one in that direction. And then it's to, it's that, and it's what you're saying, it's being content in, in that moment going, okay, all right, maybe it's not 150 pounds, but I am walking every day. And, and you know what, I am, I am not, you know, I am not, you know, going to, you know, stopping at the 7-Eleven uh, to go to, to, to go pee because, um, <laughs> cause I'm going to pee in the woods and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but, uh, <laughs> that's one of my rules. That's sure. one of your rules. Uh, but it's, it, it, it really is true. We have to learn to be, to be satisfied at that point going, oh, I've made, I'm, I'm making some strides here and, and that's good. And, and then I'm going to make the next one and that's good. And then I'm going to make the next one. That's good. But sometimes we get so caught up into the big lofty goal and we don't get there. And, and, you know, as you, as you will talk about in these 50 steps, we'll get to here in a little bit. It, 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 it actually sets us back because then we never do it and, and we never get there. Yeah. Right. So I want to talk yeah. to you about something yeah. in chapter six and it's called adventures in diet land. Let the games begin. Because here's the, the thing that I thought was so eye opening to me about this book is that when your mom was at home, she was making food for you. And so she would have to call you to dinner. Dinner every day. Right, and dinner every day. And then comes this great invention that we all love called the microwave. Oh, boy. Called the microwave. Here's what I... It ruined my life. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no. No, no, I I, I, I get that. I'm going to let you talk about that. But here's the piece that... Here's the piece I, I wonder if people aren't paying attention to you. Because I don't know if that if you if it was something that you worked through or if it was accidental, but so much of what we are today has been constructed from something we were as a child. A million percent. No, I totally agree. And so some people go, I you know I don't want to look back at my childhood and that has nothing to do with who I am today. But man, when you get into chapter six, you prove it. Well, I don't know. What, so what we're talking about is that when my mother, we got a microwave. Right before we got a microwave, my mother was finishing up her teaching my sister how to make, you know, basic food, like just basic culinary stuff, what bacon powder was, bacon soda, flour, how to level off, how to, you know, grade cheese, all that stuff. I didn't know any of that. I'm the youngest of four. And so my mother was eventually going to get to me, but my sister was ahead of me. And my sister, to this day, cooks everything from scratch, you know, and uh, I'm really good at heating stuff up. And it's because my mom, we got a microwave and my mom got a night job. So my mom got a night job and a microwave right on the same time. And so she stopped cooking for me. Instead, she started buying for me pre-made meals. And it went from asking my mom what was for dinner and her telling me to wait, right? Like, just wait for dinner. No, you're not. Put that down. Put that away. You're going to wait for your dinner. You're ruining your dinner. It went from that to, uh, I, I bought you some Hot Pockets in the freezer. Just heat yourself something up whenever, whenever you want. Mm. Every time I opened the freezer, there was pot pies, Hot Pockets, pizza bites, you know, magic fries. I mean, you name the, the microwavable food that was coming out in the 80s. I mean, it was, uh, you know, the the colored packages galore. And I, so I did not learn how to cook. Mm. I did not learn how to, how to wait for food. I did. If if I had a whim of not hunger, just, Oh, I feel like having, Oh, you know, it'd be really good right now is this thing. Mm. I would just go make it. And I stopped Mm. asking and, and that's kind of perpetuated it. But how I figured that out was, in this journey of trying to figure out how to change my life and change my habits, one of the things I realized was I didn't know how to cook. I really don't know. Like this one, you know, as a tip, like, Oh, you should read all the ingredients in a rest, you know, in a hotel, I mean, a, a grocery store. So when you go in, just make sure to like read for what, like, what do I even be looking for? Like I'm not a stupid person, but I've been grabbing going it for so long or ordering at a restaurant. Right. Like I just didn't know how to cook. And so I was like, you know what? The, you know what's slowing me down is that stupid microwave. I've got to throw away my microwave. I'm not going to use it anymore. My mom would heat up coffee, black coffee, on the stove in a pan. I can do that. 
But, you know, listen, I just recently started carrying cash again because where I live, everybody is now charging a 3 to 5% surcharge because they're being charged. Right. And so they're no longer, you know, accepting plastic with no, with no, um, with no fees. And so now I'm like, I'm going back to cash. I did right. cash my whole life. I was fine. I don't want to pay no three to 5% fee, right. but that's what it was like for cooking in microwave. So one of my rules, throw away your microwave, start figuring out how to cook. It will slow you down. Mm. It will make you better every time. By the way, we're talking here with uh, Ralph Peterson, author of the book, Adventures in Diet Land, uh, how to win at the game of dieting from a former fat guy. It's an outstanding read. It's available on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, books everywhere. If, if they don't have it on the bookshelf, just tell them, I, I want it, and they'll get it for you. And then say, well, you should put some of these on the shelf because these, this is a really good book. Matter of fact, it's, it even says number one bestseller, so why don't you have this on the bookshelf because that's ridiculous that you don't have a bookshelf. No, really, say that to the person at Barnes & Noble. I really want you to. And then tell them to face it out so that they see it You know, because it's really important. It's a great... It's a great read. You're going to enjoy it, by the way. I don't care who you are. Even if you feel like you're in uh, amazing shape, I think the psychology of understanding how somebody makes that transformation, it just makes this book fantastic. And Ralph is joining us here on A New Direction. Hey, folks, I want to talk about uh, our new sponsor here on A New Direction, uh, Epic Physical Therapy. And it's a facility that is probably... I think offers the most advanced top of the line equipment and, and skills uh, out there. They have the Alter G anti gravity treadmill, the Norma Tech compression sleeves. They also have Game Ready. Just these are just a few of the things they have. They are trained and certified the most comprehensive cutting edge treatments available, including blood flow restriction therapy, dry needling, cupping, just to name a few. Learn how they can make your life more epic by going to epicpt.com. That's epic pt e p i c p t. Dot com And Linda Craft and Team Realtors, no matter where you're at in the world, they can help you match up with the great, the, the best experts to help you sell your home or buy your home. They've been in the business for 35 years. And the reason why they've been in business for 35 years, because they're known as the legends of customer service. And it's not just, a, it's not something they say, it's part of their culture. It's how they started their business and they continue to do business in the same way. And that is not just, not just service, but to serve. And that's what they do, and they pride themselves on that. They're located in Raleigh, North Carolina, but they can help people all over the world because they're so well-connected to so many other great professionals in the real estate industry. So why not check them out? Because they're absolutely outstanding. It's lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T.com. And they're bringing you a Ralph Peterson diet land and a new direction. And we're here on A New Direction with uh, Ralph Peterson and his book, Diet Land. And so, as we're in chapter six, there's something in this chapter that I found very appealing that I, I think the listeners want to hear because I don't think there's probably a listener who's ever struggled with their weight and weight loss who has ever said, I have tried so many diets. So, let me to do this a little bit. Atkins, paleo, body for life craze, Weight Watchers, uh, just to name a few. But, I mean, you've tried grapefruit diet. You've tried them all. Everything. A grapefruit diet works, by the way. That's a that's a that's a fun little thing to know that if you pair a grapefruit with a protein, you're not hungry. It's a it's a hunger killer. It's super great. Like a, a couple of scrambled eggs and a full of grapefruit. I dare you to try to keep eating. No, I mean you of course keep eating. No, it's a real great. <laughs> I love the grapefruit diet. But um, yeah, everything. I've I've tried everything. The whole 360, the F Factor diet. Uh, you know, paleo, Atkins, you said all those. Jenny Craig, oh my God, oh, Jenny yeah. Craig. Did I like Jenny Craig? Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, and you know what? I, I learned. I failed at every single one of them, but I knew what was what made me fail. Like I could, I'm like, you know what? The reason that I don't do well on Atkins is because you shouldn't tell. I'm a stuffer, so right. just as a, you know, there's um, different people are different, uh, overweight for a different reason. Me, it's because I'm a stuffer because I. For one reason or another, I love that overfull feeling. And when you're doing Atkins, you know what they tell you, as long as you eat lean protein and no carbs, you can eat as much as you want. You should never tell a stuffer you can eat as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> because we take that literally. And we, you know, it's, um, it was way too far out of my, my normal. The, Jenny Craig, I have some, I have some friends who are right now doing Jenny Craig. And I was so eager and probably annoying to them 
when they said, oh, we're doing Jenny Craig, I was like, good. Okay, so Jenny Craig, that's good. Um, add food to it. And they're like, you're not supposed to add food. I'm like, I know, but that's what made me fail. I failed at Jenny Craig because the, it's not big enough portion for me <laughs> as a stuffer. And so I would have two or three Jenny Craig meals. But the, the workaround is you add vegetables, right. add broccoli. And it doesn't even matter how much broccoli, just add broccoli, right. add Brussels sprouts, add a vegetable to Jenny Craig. That's how you get Jenny Craig to work because, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, it's just, I know the workarounds. I know how I played the game anyway. Right. I know how I overworked it so that it made me fail, it made me gain weight rather than lose weight. I, I, th I found it interesting. But full disclosure, I, I am on Weight Watchers and it is the diet for me. Right. And I'm so happy they just changed it. So happy. Okay, we're we're gonna talk about that, but I want to, I want I want no, I, we're gonna talk about that because we, I know you're on WW, uh, but I wanted to talk about something that I don't think people are paying attention to, and as soon as I read it, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so so much sense, and I really want you to address this, and I'm just gonna give you the, I'm gonna feed you, right? I'm gonna put this on a tee for you, and I'll let you whack it. Here we go. Okay, when it comes to problems with diet plans that send you food, it's the same pitch as the fast food restaurant. We know you don't have busy. to do anything. Yeah. Listen, just sit on your couch. You don't have to prepare anything. You don't have to think about it. We're just going to bring you delicious food. And you know what? Our food is so good that it's going to make you lose weight even while you sit there. Mm -hmm. It's this whole mentality of grab and go. It's this mentality. If you don't have, you don't, listen, learning about how to cook and how to put meals together, and that's for somebody else who's got the time. You haven't got the time. Mm -hmm. Let us do it for you. It's the biggest crock that I bought into forever. And it, again, it leads to me throwing away my microwave and going, no more. No more of this heating stuff up out of the freezer. If I can't cook it, I ain't eating it. Mm -hmm. I, I loved your mm -hmm. quote there where you said, you know, the one line that they both use is, we know you're busy. <laughs> they do. <laughs> right? They know you're busy. And so. you know what? We are busy. They're so right. right. That marketing campaign is so good. How did they know? Yeah, I, I, right. <laughs> so I, let's go through the 50 rules everyone should know. I, and we're not going to do all 50, by the way, I, I, because we don't have the time. But your top 10 are really, really, really important. And so um, let's let's see if we can get through some of these top 10, because these top 10 are really set up the other 40, because uh, yeah. they're, they're really crucial. So rule number one is begin with the end in mind. So what do you mean when you say if people are going to start doing this, going to play in this diet, that they have their adventure in diet land, what do you mean by beginning with the end in mind? I mean, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, what are you, what is the goal here? And obviously we're going to say, you know, the goal is we want to lose weight. We want to, we want to be a different person and healthy, right? But that, that's super important to know that what your goal, what, like for me, it was never about weight. If I weighed 4,000 pounds mm. but had a size 32 waist, let me tell you something. I would not care one bit about that 4,000-pound weight, right? right. It's the way I, I wanted to look a certain way. Mm. I wanted to fit into certain clothes. You know, I, I wanted to be able to shop at a store. You know how many stores do not make uh, clothes available for people who are 3 or 4X? I mean, a lot of stores. Lot I mean, of so stores. much so that they're now specialty stores for people who are three, four, four, four X close. So for me, it wasn't about the weight. It was about the way I wanted to look and the way I wanted to feel. I wanted to feel better. I wanted to be able to tie my shoe front ways. I always tied my shoe on the side mm. because I had to put my belly somewhere when I bent over. Right. Mm. So begin with the end. What, what, what is your actual goal? And it, sure. Let's say it's to lose weight, but for what, what, what do you want to look like? What do you want to feel like? What, because if, if the number doesn't matter as far as the weight, good. Because, like, I again, I, I don't care about how much I weigh as much as I care about how I the look. size of my pants. <laughs> yeah, well, no, well, no it's, and it's a really good point because, it, I, you, know, I'm an, you know, I'm an avid gym goer. You know, I love to go gym about five days a week. And I love it. I lift heavy and I lift hard. And the thing that people don't understand is I don't worry about, I don't worry about how much I weigh. I worry about how I look. And so I, I want my waistline to be thinner. So 
it's it, because the muscle just is heavier. I can't. It's hard to explain to people. It's the same thing with me. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to look better. Yeah, yeah I just want to feel better. Yeah, I. So you know, when I'm when when my pant size is going down, I'm actually that's the happiest moment. When I can get into the next pant size down, those are the happy moments. When I can get into the next shirt size down, those are happy moments for me. That. Ne- yeah, it's not the way. It never is. And I think sometimes we put so much pressure on that. Uh, I, I feel like we overdo it. The second thing you have is pick a start date, and you have two qualifications, three qualifications. Uh, pick a date that's at least two weeks away. Don't wait more than four weeks and start on a Friday. That's right. So, like, right now, we're listening to – you're, you're listening to this radio show, and you're hearing about this guy who uh, – he sounds really fantastic, and he is. I know him well. Um, <laughs> who wrote this book about dieting and you're like, you know what? Maybe some of these make sense. You know, maybe, maybe I should or could, or maybe, you know, if he did it, maybe I can do it, which is the best thing I can offer. Just an you know, example, I did it, which means if I did it, trust me, anybody can. And tomorrow's Thanksgiving, right? So tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Friday is black Friday, Saturday. I don't know if you heard, but I'm getting married. There's an awful lot of cake and pies in my future over the next three to four or five days. Right. <laughs> It's going to be very challenging to start today, get all excited about listening to this radio show, and then start a diet on Friday. So I'm saying, wait at least, give yourself at least two weeks because you need to set yourself up for success. If you're going to try to start a diet and you still have ring dings in your refrigerator, listen, we've got to we've got to get those out of the refrigerator. We're going to get we're going to clean your cupboards out. Get separate yourself from the bad food. The other thing about not waiting more than four weeks is, trust me, if, you, if it's three weeks later, you're not going to do it. So put yourself on a timer way before four weeks, at least two, two, two weeks out. And I talked about it a little earlier, all diets should start on a Friday. Mm-hmm. Every diet should start on a Friday. And I'm going to take it one step further. I always weighed in with Weight Watchers. You go to a meeting and you weigh in every week. I always weighed in on Saturdays. And Saturday mornings was my weigh in for years and years and years. I recently changed my way in to Monday morning because I find myself giving myself a little too much liberty after my way in Saturday morning. And, you know, I have all the time in the world to eat like an idiot Saturday night and all day Sunday <laughs> and a Monday morning. I'm, you know, I've gained all the loss I've taken. So I've moved my way in dates to Monday morning. So that's another tip. It's not in the book. Take it from me. Wait on Monday. <laughs> Start your diet on Friday. Weigh it on Monday. So there you go. I love it. <laughs> I, okay, I, the, here's the one though that really, I mean, this really punched me in the face because I, we don't talk about this, and you, I, you're the only person I've ever heard talk about this, and it's the fourth, your fourth rule, and that is, choose a plan that is going to be one that most closely resembles your current eating habits. I thought that was brilliant. I just thought I think that. Was, that's- I think that's, I think that I see this now. I mean, it was, it was pretty great when I thought of it then, when I, when, it, when I figured it out then, but I see it in business too, where people try to do things that are not, that are so outside their own comfort zone that it's hard for them to even get it off the ground. And that's what it was with diet. And there are so many diets. The F factor diet works. It's all based on fiber, you know, eating more fiber. Cause if you're in a position where you have to, you can't exercise as much because of work or pregnancy, the F factor diet works so beautiful. If you're the type of person who likes those high fiber foods, then the the paleo diet or the Atkins, which are pretty similar, those are fantastic diets for people who really do well maintaining themselves on a real strict protein diet. People who are just normally naturally grown to protein. I'm not. I eat everything. I like to have a slice of pizza. I like to have. Um, you know, eggs and I like to have chicken or whatever. So for me, the best diet for me was one that let me have what I was normally, I grew up eating regular food, meat, potato, and a vegetable. And so that's why Weight Watchers worked the best for me because it mirrored what I currently was eating. It was a lot easier because if you're going to try to make these huge changes, I failed every time trying to make huge changes. Right. The only right. time I ever was successful is I started to make small changes, mm. small, meaningful changes. That's awesome. Let, let's skip down a little further. Um, number eight is get to know your doctor. I love this story. <laughs> I After I wrote the book, I went to my doctor and I gave her a copy and she cried and she was so moved by it. She's like, I failed you. I go, you didn't fail me. I, you didn't <laughs> fail me at all. 
it, here, <laughs> here's the thing about that is um, I have a female doctor and uh, uh, as much as I, I mean, I'm way better now, but as much as I didn't ever want to be, you know, uh, the type of person who can't be honest with a female doctor or doesn't want to have a physical by a female doctor, you know, my, my doctor, doctor, she's, uh, maybe a couple years older than me. Like she, we could be dating. You know what I mean? Like she's in my age range, you know, and she's my doctor wanted to do a physical with me. And I'm like, I'm not comfortable at all. And I'm heavier than you should ever allow yourself to be. And she of course isn't right. So she's got everything that she's way better positioned than I am. You know, forget that the pedigree, she's the doctor, of course. But so I was never honest with her. She would be like, um, you know, how's the weight? You know, after she weighed me and saw I gained 25 pounds in the last three months since she'd seen me. I'd be like, no, I feel fine. Uh, is there any problems with joints at all? I'm like, no. I mean, of course, it took me 30 minutes to walk 15 feet into the hospital because, uh, you know, I was sitting in the car too long. I was never honest with her. Never. And she did the best she could, poking, prodding. Are you sure? Do you want to? Can we talk about it? And I was like, no, no, no. Super embarrassed. And finally, I just, I was just, you know, she had shown me a, she had turned her monitor for my little checkup there and it looked like a mountain and it was 10 years of my weight gain. And there wasn't one time it went down. Mm. The graph just went up and I was just, so she had actually offered to get me into overeaters anonymous. She's mm. like, um, you know, you're not a candidate for surgery. You know, maybe we can do an overeaters anonymous, you know? And that was when I was, the, it was the first time I'd ever, broke down i mean i wasn't like crying like a little kid or nothing but i when i was i was again very embarrassed really really and dead set and just and i just said you know i'm like i i i i need help i don't know what to say i don't know what to do i'm 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 you know i mean the level of despair and and i remember her just going like we can help no problem like all you needed to do was be willing to accept help. You know, all you needed to do is go, Hey, let's stop avoiding, stop not making eye contact with me. I'm a doctor. I'm here to help you, you know? And she did. She put me in Overeaters Anonymous, which I think I wrote about. Didn't work out exactly well for me, but right. <laughs> it, it, I went to Overeaters Anonymous at 350 pounds and I was the smallest person there. Oh, wow. So yeah. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah, that's, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's it's so relative too. I remember I was at a Weight Watchers meeting, and I was right where I was trying to get under 300 pounds. I mean, I I was doing so well, and I was around 301, 301.5, 300.5, and I was like every week I'm like, come on, we get under that 300 pounds. I couldn't wait, couldn't wait. And you know, I get there, and I'm convinced I'm going to do it, and I don't. I'm like, I'm like two points above 300, and I sit down, and I'm all mad. And somebody goes, you know, so did you have a bad weigh-in? And I go, yeah, I mean, it's 300.2. And a guy behind me goes, I wish I weighed 300.2. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, what a jerk I am. Mm. Wow. Perspective, right? Perspective is everything. It, 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 right. Perspective is everything. He was struggling to get under 400, right. and I'm acting – like because I only lost point one pounds, the world was ending. Right. Ugh. Yeah. You, you, you realize we've been on for an hour. Oh, have we? No, I <laughs> talked to you all day. I know this could go on all day. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I could just do, I could just sit here. We just do this all day because I'm. Uh, by the way, there, he's got fifty of well, these. Who's the next sponsor? Yeah. Well, no, 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 yeah, I got to get another sponsor <laughs> for the show, uh, and they're gonna have to give me a two-hour slot on the radio. Um, so. This uh, this book, Diet Land, is outstanding. It's fantastic. And Ralph, I've asked you twice before uh, this this thing that I'm about to ask you, and I'm going to ask you again. You know, the, first of all, you've been a great guest. You've been a great friend, and, and I appreciate you so much, and I'm so grateful for you to be on the show. And I always ask, um, you know, the show's called A New Direction because we help people find a new direction in their life or their career or their business or all three. If you could leave the listeners of A New Direction with, a new direction based on diet land. What would that be from Ralph Peterson? Well, I got to tell you, dieting and, and your own health is super personal. And I always, you know, people are always like, what, what should, um, 
my friend's really heavy. Like, what should I say to them? You know, my answer is nothing, you know, <laughs> Malone. I hated it when people are like, you know, do you want to talk about your weight? Like, why are you a doctor, an expert or something? No, don't leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> You know, there's this great thing. I'm about to become a dog owner because my fiance owns a dog, and so I'm very excited to be the first time I own a dog. And one of the things about pets that I've learned is that people take really much better care about their pets than they do themselves, right? Like, if my if the vet says, "Hey, your dog has to get this," and the dog's not going to like it, and you got to force it down their throat and you know pet them a couple of times afterward because it's really going to be terrible, but in the end, it's going to work for him. We would do it. You know, we would, we'd tackle the dog, we'd force it down his throat, we'd pick up the vomit, you know, it, all with a smile. But somewhere along the line, we just, we don't treat ourselves the same way because in my instance, I never thought I was worth it. And if there's a new direction, I think that you should be taken is that you, you should really appreciate that you really are worth it. You know, you should, you should get a mirror. And you should pull it up to one of your eyes, not both of them, because you'll get cross-eyed. Just look in one eye. Just one eye. There was somebody in your life who looked in that same eye that you're looking in, and they completely fell head over heels. Mm. Mm. They, right. they saw the most amazing, most beautiful, most worth it person in the universe. And that's what you need to start seeing. Mm. You've got to start putting yourself first. You are worth it. You're more important than your kids. You're more important than your spouse. You're more important than your job, your friends, your neighbors, your parents. You are way more important than anybody in the entire world. You're worth it. Take your take. Do something for you. Put yourself first. Mm. It's worth it. Mm. Love it. That's beautiful. His name is Ralph Peterson. Books titled Adventures in Diet Land. How to Win at the Game of Dieting from a Former Fat Guy. The book is outstanding. It's a bestseller. You need to pick it up. Amazon, listen to him, read it to you on Amazon, on audio, on audiobooks. It's fantastic. Folks, this is the show, right? I can't ask uh, for a better show. This is, the, this is unbelievable. And I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for all of you listening all over the world, uh, 37 countries and growing every week. We are so grateful. Um, all over the U.S., and I could not be more thankful to all of you out there. I want to wish you a great holidays, especially this Thanksgiving. Uh, this is a Thanksgiving show, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there. And if it, and if you're listening to this later, you know what? I hope it was a great, right, for you as well. And uh, you know what? Why I always say, be inspired, because when you're inspired, that means you can inspire other people. And when that happens, that means they can inspire others, and that can make this world a tremendous place. So you know what? I'll be back here next week with another fantastic guest, I promise. And as I say every week, ciao, everybody. To go a different way, yeah. The time has come for a new direction. Yeah, yeah. New direction. Yeah, yeah. When you lost your confidence. And the answers don't make sense You got to keep your hope alive You got to know you can survive This is your time to find A new direction, a brand new day A new direction, things are gonna change Dreams will take you places you have never been before. Find your passion, find your strength.